This is a sunnah too. This is a sunnah too. This is a sunnah too. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, wa salat wa salam wa ala Sayyid al Mursaleen. Amma ba'd, fa'udhu billahi min ash shaytan rajim Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. الصلاة والسلام عليك يا رسول الله وعلى آلك وأصحابك يا حبيب الله الصلاة والسلام عليك يا نبي الله وعلى آلك وأصحابك يا نور الله Welcome dear viewers to another episode of our program This is a Sunnah too And inshallah in this episode we will also be mentioning a Sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that was found within his blessed character his akhlaq his mannerism because normally when we hear the word sunnah, we think of the external sunnahs, the physical sunnahs, like using the miswak, wearing an imama, and all these are great and excellent sunnahs, of course. But in this program, we are endeavoring to mention the sunnahs related to the beautiful character of the Prophet You can also refer to them as internal sunnahs as well. So inshallah, in this episode, we're going to mention a beautiful, Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, which is known as forbearance. Hilm. Forbearance is when a person is wronged and he has the ability to enact revenge, but instead he treats that person in a nice manner, meaning he doesn't repay evil with evil. And when we look at the life of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi wa alihi Wasallam, subhanAllah, there are countless examples of this. And in the Quran, Allah has praised this quality of forbearance. The ahadith mention the importance, the virtue of being forbearing. So let us begin, inshallah, first of all, with a verse of the Noble Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala states, Repay using that which is better. So it's referring to when someone has wronged you, someone has done evil towards you, you repay that with that which is better. You react in a way which is better than their way. What will be the result? The person between whom you and them was enmity, you had enmity, dispute. What will happen? You will be like close friends. When you repay evil with good, with something which is better, then this is the reward, this is the outcome that, that enmity that was between you will be removed. And it will be as if you are close companions, close friends, well wishes of each other. So this is what the Quran tells us, that repaying evil with good, so being forbearing, when someone's wronged you, you're patient, and then you react in a way that is better. And what will happen is that will make that person think automatically. I've wronged this person. I've oppressed them. Look how they've reacted. He'll feel remorseful. He'll feel regretful. Allah willing. So this is from the teachings of the Quran. And then when we move on to the ahadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in one narration we are told, and Sayyidina Ali radiallahu ta'ala is the Rabi is the narrator. He states that the Prophet said, Indeed, the one who shows forbearance, the one who displays forbearance, reaches the rank of those who fast during the day and perform worship at night. Subhanallah. So you have one person, a believer who is fasting throughout the day. He is struggling against his nafs. He is not eating from dusk till dawn. And then in the evening, rather than relaxing, that person is offering salah, worship for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Qiyamul layl. And in this hadith we are told that the one who displays forbearance, he reaches the same rank as that believer. As the believer who fasts, during the day and worships at night. In another narration, Sayyiduna Ubadah bin Samit radiallahu an relates 
that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Shall I not inform you of an amal, of a deed, by means of which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will raise your ranks? The Sahaba radiallahu anhu ajma'in said, Ya Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, do tell us, do inform us. The Prophet alayhi salam replied, Whoever acts ignorantly towards you, you should show forbearance before them. And whoever oppresses you, you should forgive them. And whoever deprives you, you should give to them, you should grant to them. And whoever breaks relations with you, severs relations with you, you should maintain and mend relations, join relations with them, join ties with them. So four things were mentioned in this narration. What was the question, the initial question? The Prophet Sallallahu asked the Sahaba, shall I not inform you of such a'mal by means of which Allah raises the ranks? The Sahaba were inquisitive. The Sahaba wanted to know, to act upon this. The Prophet Sallallahu told them that number one, when someone acts ignorantly towards you, you should show forbearance. You should be forbearing. If someone oppresses you, you should forgive them. If someone deprives you, you should give to them. And if someone severs relations with you, breaks relations with you, you should try your most to mend those relations, join those relations with them. Inshallah, when you do these things, Allah will give you high ranks. Another hadith, Sayyiduna Sahal bin Sa'ad radiallahu anhu raised. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Forbearance is from Allah and being hasty is from shaitan. Now, think about it, Davius. When you are in that situation, somebody has wronged you, somebody has behaved immorally towards you, and you show forbearance at that time, no doubt this is the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is from Allah. And what happens with other people, unfortunately, they react angrily. And they repay evil with evil. And they only have one thing on their mind. That the way this person wronged me, harmed me and pained me, I'm going to reciprocate. I'm going to return that treatment. I'm going to treat the person in the same way. But what are we told in the hadith? That whoever is hasty, whoever is quick in this regard, this is from shaitan. Shaitan makes a person do this. So these are the virtues of forbearance. There are many other narrations as well. In one narration, the Prophet ﷺ would supplicate. He would make a beautiful dua. And what was that dua? This is something that we should make. Because remember, the Prophet ﷺ, his a'mal, many a times they were for ta'aleem al-ummah, to teach the ummah, to instruct the ummah. So when he prays for certain things, he already had them. They were in his character. But he is showing us, the ummah is the way to follow. So the Prophet ﷺ would perform dua. Allahumma aghnini bil ilm. O oh Allah, enrich me with knowledge. Wazayini bil hilm. And adorn me with forbearance. Wa akrimni bil taqwa. And O oh Allah, honor me with taqwa. Wa jammilni bil afiyah. Grant me beauty through well being. Afiyah. This is a beautiful dua of the Prophet. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. What were the four things that the Prophet alayhi wa sallam supplicated for? Number one, O oh Allah, enrich me with knowledge. What was the second thing? Oh Allah, adorn me with forbearance. And we're talking about forbearance. The Prophet is making dua. He is making dua for forbearance. And we need to make this dua in our life as well. Wa akrimni bit taqwa. Oh Allah, honor me with taqwa. And lastly, wa jammilni bil afiyah. Oh Allah, beautify me with well being. Such a comprehensive dua that we should make a part of our lives every day, every few days, whenever we remember. We should make this dua. Another hadith. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Seek loftiness in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Seek an elevated status. Sahaba kiram alayhi wa they asked, Ya Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, what, what are you referring to? What do you mean? The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Whoever breaks ties with you, join ties with them, mend ties with them. Whoever deprives you, you should grant to them. And whoever behaves ignorantly towards you, you should display forbearance before them. SubhanAllah, similar to a previous hadith. 
And in this hadith, the Prophet ﷺ, again encouraging us, persuading us, says you should seek lofty heights, loftiness. And how are we going to achieve that, attain that? By mending ties with those who break ties with us, by giving to those who deprive us, and by showing forbearance before those who act ignorantly towards us. Another hadith, Sayyiduna Sahal bin Sa'ad radiallahu anhu narrates, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, forbearance is from Allah and being hasty is from shaitan. Now, think about it, dear viewers. When you are in that situation, somebody has wronged you, somebody has behaved immorally towards you, and you show forbearance at that time, no doubt this is a mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is from Allah. And what happens with other people, unfortunately, they react angrily. And they repay evil with evil. They only have one thing on their mind. That the way this person wronged me, harmed me and pained me, I'm going to reciprocate. I'm going to return that treatment. I'm going to treat the person in the same way. But what are we told in the hadith? That whoever is hasty, whoever is quick in this regard, this is from shaitan. Shaitan makes a person do this. These are the virtues of forbearance. There are many other narrations as well. In one narration, the Prophet ﷺ would supplicate. He would make a beautiful dua. And what was that dua? This is something that we should make. Because remember, the Prophet ﷺ, his a'mal, many a times they were for ta'aleem al-ummah, to teach the ummah, to instruct the ummah. So when he prays for certain things, he already had them. They were in his character. But he is showing us, the ummah is the way to follow. So the Prophet ﷺ would perform dua. Allahumma aghnini bil ilm. O Allah, enrich me with knowledge. Wazayyini bil hilm. And adorn me with forbearance. Wa akrimni bil taqwa. And O Allah, honor me with taqwa. Wa jammilni bil afiyah. Grant me beauty through well-being. Afiyah. This is a beautiful dua of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. What were the four things that the Prophet alayhi wa sallam supplicated for? Number one, O oh Allah, enrich me with knowledge. What was the second thing? O oh Allah, adorn me with forbearance. And we're talking about forbearance. The Prophet alayhi wa sallam making dua. He is making dua for forbearance. And we need to make this dua in our life as well. Wa akrimni bit taqwa. O Allah, honor me with taqwa. And lastly, wa jammilni bil afiyah. O oh Allah, beautify me with well-being. Such a comprehensive dua that we should make a part of our lives every day, every few days. Whenever we remember, we should make this dua, inshallah. Allah will adorn us with forbearance. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will honor us with taqwa. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will beautify us with afiyah, with well-being as well, inshallah. Another hadith, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, seek loftiness in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He can elevate his status. Sahaba kiram alayhim ridwan, they asked, Ya Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, what, what are you referring to? What do you mean? The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam said, whoever breaks ties with you, join ties with them, mend ties with them. Whoever deprives you, you should grant to them. And whoever behaves ignorantly towards you, you should display forbearance before them. Another hadith, Sayyidun Abdullah bin Abbas radiallahu an narrates that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to the leader of Abdul Qais, you have two qualities within you, which Allah likes, which Allah prefers. Number one, forbearance, and number two, dignity. Subhanallah. What are we told in this hadith? That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala likes the quality of forbearance. A person showing forbearance is beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is why the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to this individual, the leader of Abdul Qais, that Allah likes two qualities that are found within you. Number one, forbearance. Number two, waqar, dignity. So we too should strive to adopt these qualities as well. And last hadith I'll mention before moving on to a beautiful account of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa where he showed forbearance. And what did that forbearance lead to? Inshallah, very soon you will find out. In the last narration, Sayyidina Abdullah bin Abbas radiallahu anhuma states, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, whoever does not have any one of the following three qualities, then 
you should consider that his a'mal are non-existent. I mean, he has no a'mal. Number one, piety which prevents a person from disobeying Allah. Number two, forbearance by means of which he is forbearing towards the ignorant, the foolish one. Someone acts foolishly, but he replies in a forbearing way. This is a good quality. And thirdly, good character by means of which he can live his life in society with goodness. He can live amongst people. Such good character which will allow him, enable him to live with the people in society. Now the Prophet ﷺ said, whoever doesn't have any one of these things, whoever does not have any one of these three things, then you should consider that he doesn't have any a'mal. So what was the first thing? Taqwa, which prevents disobedience of Allah. Secondly, forbearance, by means of which a person acts forbearingly to someone who is foolish. And thirdly, good character by means of which a person is able to live amongst people in society. So I've mentioned eight narrations here regarding the excellence of forbearance. And there are many other narrations, but we will stop there and move on to a beautiful account from the life of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Subhanallah, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, his character was matchless, flawless. And in the Injil, Torah, the Bible, the Torah, they mentioned his blessed Osaf. And we will find out from this account, Subhanallah, how a person who was a scholar of the previous scriptures wanted to see these Osaf in the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and how beautifully they manifested as well. Abdullah bin Salam radiallahu anhu states that when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordained for Zayd bin Sa'ana to gain guidance, to attain guidance, Zayd bin Sa'ana narrates that when I saw the blessed face of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, I recognized all the signs of prophethood, subhanAllah. But there were two signs that I was yet to see. Number one, his forbearance precedes his anger. And number two, no matter how ignorantly you behave towards the Prophet ﷺ, the forbearance of the Prophet ﷺ increases. The more you act ignorantly towards him, ﷺ, the more his forbearance increases. So Zayd bin Sa'ana, who was a rabbi, who was a scholar of the previous scriptures, especially the Torah, he says that I was looking for an opportunity to find out whether the Prophet ﷺ has these two qualities. The Prophet ﷺ borrowed some dates from him. And a time was appointed for the dates to be paid back. When he gave the dates to the Prophet ﷺ, way before the deadline of repayment, he came to the Prophet ﷺ and he pulled harshly on his cloak. To the extent that a mark was left, a sign was left on the blessed neck of Rasulullah. That's how harshly and hardly he pulled. Sayyidina Umar and was present. And how could he remain silent? He said, Ya Rasulullah, let me deal with this person. And he just wanted to terminate him, neutralize him. The Prophet said, Oh Umar, you should be telling me to pay back his loan and you should be telling him, advising him to be more gentle. Instead, you are asking for something completely different. You are asking for permission to do away with him. Now, Zayd bin Sa'ana returned. Sayyidina Umar radiallahu an was sent by the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa to Zayd bin Sa'ana. The dates were repaid and more were given on top. Zayd bin Sa'ana says that, Oh Umar, the dates that I gave were repaid. But what about this extra on top? Sayyidina Umar radiallahu anh says, this is because of what I said at that time. I reacted out of anger and I asked permission for something. Prophet ﷺ did not like that and this is why he's given more on top. Sayyidina Umar radiallahu anh asked him, why did you pull the collar, the cloak of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa So Zayd bin Sa'ana said, that the reason why I did this, I saw and I spotted all the signs of Nabuwa within the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa but there were two signs that I had yet to see. Number one, his forbearance precedes his ghadab, his anger, dominates his anger, his forbearance. Secondly, when the more someone acts ignorantly towards him, the more his forbearance increases. These two signs, I had to test. I can't see them just by looking at the blessed Zad of Rasulullah 
I could see all the other signs of prophethood, but these two I could not see. Hence, I did what I did. I provoked a reaction, but that reaction was in accordance to the signs that I read. That yes, the Prophet وسلم, his hilm precedes his ghadab, his forbearance precedes his anger. And secondly, the more you behave ignorantly towards him, his forbearance increases. And now that I have seen these, O Umar, I bear witness, and you are a witness, that there is none worthy of worship except Allah and the beloved messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam is the final messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and like this he entered the fold of Islam. So subhanallah dear viewers, you've just seen from this account that the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was very forbearing and that's a test. So when someone is making you angry, is provoking you, is, is trying to get a reaction out of you, what do you do at that time? Sayyidina Abdullah bin Mas'ud radiallahu anh says, if you want to test the forbearance of a person, observe him in a state of anger. And here the Prophet ﷺ had every right to be angry. He was pulled so harshly that he left a mark. But how did he react? With forbearance. And those signs of prophecy, those signs of Nabuwa that Sayyid bin Sa'ana was looking for, he saw and then he accepted Islam. Today even, inshallah, if we show forbearance, hilm, then we can bring about great change in our society as well. We can preach Islam in a beautiful manner, in a manner that leads to others researching into Islam loving Islam and eventually wanting to become Muslims as well. May Allah Jalla wa ala enable us to act upon what has been said and to adopt forbearance. Ameen bijahin nabi al Amin. sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. This is a sunnah to This is a sunnah to This is a sunnah